One of the secrets to a successful self-portrait is having a very good reference photo to start with. And secondly, setting the stage properly. The way you set up and organize your Illustrator document is going to be key. If you don't follow along and set up layers and name things proper, then you have an issue later and a question. My uh, my response to helping you may not be in your favor. If you're not doing it properly and you're not following directions, I may not be inclined to help you. So, let's get started here. We're going to do a new Illustrator document, Command N, and I'm going to choose Custom Inkjet, and I'm going to start Profile. Right, that's tall and skinny. I'm going to click OK, or Portrait. Sorry portrait land instead of landscape and want to work in full screen I'm going to hit F to work in full screen um, space bar kind of move that in the middle now I want to bring in my portrait photo so luckily uh, Mrs. Hayes is letting me use her as an example so I'm going to come up to file and I'm going to choose place and I have it saved on my desktop Mrs. Hayes right here I don't want it linked. I'm going to check unlinked. If you have it linked and you delete the photo, then like put in your trash after you've brought it in here, then it's going to disappear from your artboard. So click unlink and place. I'm going to click in the upper left hand corner, place it right on the edge of my artboard. And since this is a high resolution photo, you can see that it stretches outside of my artboard. So I'm going to hold the space bar and drag down here. And then I'm going to hold shift and proportionally drag that corner in. And then command zero to get me back to um, full view here. We want to rename this layer. This is our reference photo. We want to lock that layer. We do not want this to move. You're going to trace over it. If it moves as you're tracing, that's going to mess up your illustration. We also want to make a copy of it so that we can find out where the shadows and highlights are. So we're going to drag that layer down to new layer right here. It's going to duplicate it. I'm going to unlock it. Click on it so it's selected, right? With my black arrow, it's selected. And we're going to do an effect under artistic, which is called poster edges. The key to this is it's going to show us where the highlights and shadows are. Now as a real artist, you'd want to be able to know from the picture, but since a lot of you are starting out, this is kind of a good cheat. And we want to get rid of some of the grain and certain aspects that aren't perfect, so your settings for post edges should be 2, 0, and 1. It's going to give you, your shadows might not be in the same place, but it's going to give you this kind of style. And then we're going to click OK. We're going to double click and rename that as Shadows and highlights and then again lock that layer so that we don't move it and they're in the exact same spot and we will shift between those two I'm actually going to leave the highlights one on for now I'm going to take my zoom tool and zoom in on Mrs. Hayes's face hold the space bar just kind of bring it back over here going to make a new layer and actually you know what I'll hold off on the new layer we'll go over that in the next tutorial so in this one get your reference photo your shadows and highlights your posterization then we're going to save file save as in your Google Drive folder right Google Drive folder wherever you're saving your work for this class make a new folder for the project you should have a folder called projects I'm going to call this self or actually we'll do a vector portrait click create it's going to give us a new folder and then we're going to name it period number last name first initial underscore and portrait Don't worry about any of that, just click OK. And then as you're working, remember now that it's saved once, every five minutes or so as you're doing work, hit Command S in case something crashes, okay?